It is time for Miss Liberty Bell to take to the skies again for Mission 2. This one's a wild one, as you'll find out here today on Legendary Tactics. Now they say that the first few missions of B-17 are pretty boring. This one turned out not to be, as you'll soon find out. So I hope you'll uh, you'll join in and watch. Um, I'm going to introduce the uh, the crew. I always think it's a good idea to name all the people in your B-17. Um, it attaches some humanity to the cardboard and uh, makes it, I think, more compelling when you have a kind of a, a name there, a person almost, uh, when things happen. So um, I always recommend that. There's our, the crew, and we'll refer to them through by name as best we can. We're going to choose our target destination first off and that is going to be a, a die roll on the g1 table and we end up with Lille, um an industrial target there which isn't too far away so um, i was hoping this would be a, a quick and easy mission uh, we end up in the middle of the formation which is great we want to be anonymous uh, in that case and we're going to just check the zone information the zone information says that uh, Lille has a minus two uh, over water and a zero over front so um, as I said, I was hoping for an easy, quick uh, mission. So we're going to move our bomber. And the bomber takes off and moves over London. No attacks there. And moves into Zone 2. Over the English Channel um, and uh, near Saint-Omer. Um, so we're going to uh, choose... Uh, we don't have to roll for fighter cover because it's automatically good. That's something I forgot about in uh, my first mission, which made things a little more dramatic, but that's okay. And we're going to roll for uh, waves and we roll a six, but it's negative two. So we only have one wave to deal with um, over the, uh, the English Channel. We're going to roll for that and we get a 25, which is actually not a great roll. That's uh, lots of FW 190s. Uh, we're, luckily, we've got our good fighter cover. We're going to be able to uh, stave them off a little bit. And uh, so we were hoping for a roll of five or six. We ended up with a three. It's still OK. Um, we can remove two fighters now and one every subsequent wave. Um, so we're going to take the ones uh, away that have the highest odds of, of hitting, which is a six o'clock high, and then one of either three or nine o'clock high. Um, we do have to deal with one of those, though. Um, so we're going to do our best to uh, uh, attack and defend against uh, these uh, these guys um, and uh, see what we can get, a, get uh, away with. Um, we're going to roll with uh, for the German pilot experience. We roll for the first one, we get a two, which is green. So that uh, that fighter is going to be a little bit easier to uh, uh, to hit, which is great. And the next one is uh, average, and the last one is average as well. So um, nothing notable about the other two. So we're going to roll our defensive fire, see if we can get uh, some hits here. That would be amazing. Of course, we miss completely. Um, our hotshot uh, bombardier, uh, Lou Harlan, is uh, gets a hit and rolls an unfortunate... Well, fortunately, it's fighter breaks off attack, which is great, but uh, would have been nice to get a kill. That bombardier, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Harlan, has been doing great. And uh, the starboard waste gunner actually manages a hit against the green pilot and actually uh, destroys it. So congratulations to uh, Terrence Platt, who is our <laughs> starboard waste uh, gunner there. Um, so that certainly helps with uh, uh, things. We just have one risky roll here, and of course we roll a six. And that uh, uh, means that we have to roll for a certain number of shell hits. Now, because it's a Fock Wolf 190, we have to multiply shell hits by one and a half. So that means actually four uh, shell hits. And so we begin a lot of rolling here to see what happens. Uh, the first roll is a nine, the radio room. And uh, Alf Sharp is in the radio room. So he's uh, ducking and hiding behind something there. And uh, fortunately, the first uh, the first roll here ends up being a, uh, uh, a superficial hit. Now I roll a nine under another, uh, <laughs> another way, and I roll two. And as I said, it was the first roll because I knew this was, uh, this was coming. The heat is out in the radio room. And uh, so that's uh, not going to be very warm. It's uh, at 20,000 feet. Uh, next hit is the port wing, and uh, we roll a 12 for the landing gear. So that's a fairly rare roll there, but um, we see what happens. And unfortunately, the port wing landing gear is inoperable. That is going to make for a trickier landing when we uh, get back. Um, and the last hit is uh, the bomb bay. Uh, always nerve-wracking. 
Uh, we roll a five for the bomb bay doors. Now we need to do a follow up here and see what happens. And we do the follow up roll. Ends up being superficial damage. So that uh, that's fine. Um, that guy continues on and uh, see what, uh, what this uh, 12 o'clock high Fock Wolf does. Um, we're going to take a pot shot at him with uh, uh, Hiram Kipling, my tail gunner. Uh, hoping to get him to A status as soon as possible, but not with rules like that. So um, that fighter breaks off the attack, and the um, fighters are going to take care of this guy. He can turn around if he wants to, but the uh, the residual effect of my fighter cover allows me to remove uh, one fighter, and that's uh, that's going to be him. So um, so we are past the first um, stage here. We're moving over Lil, and that's always interesting to uh <laughs> there's much more fighter co uh, much more uh, enemy fighters there so we're gonna roll for the weather though and see what uh, what we get and we actually get a 12 which is bad weather um so that's gonna be in a way you know good for us um but uh, we're gonna roll for our we get a minus one to the uh the roll here for waves we roll a five so we reduce to a four so we still have to face a couple of waves here the first uh german fighter wave is a 31 which is a 110 in a vertical climb. Um, not the most threatening, especially with good uh, fighter cover. So we'll uh, roll for that. I think it's basically an automatic, um, an automatic uh, thing here. So we get uh, we get a three. So we remove uh, that that fighter before he even gets close, uh, which is great. Um, and uh, then we move on to the uh, the next uh, wave here, and the next wave ends up being a 15, which is four, five 190s again. Oh my gosh, one of them in a vertical dive too, so this is not gonna be fun. Um, so we're going to uh, do our best with the fighter cover defense. High roll here would be awesome. And we do get a six, so that really helps. We can't do anything but the, the, one in, the German fighter in the vertical dive, but we can certainly take away the six o'clock high the 1030 level and the nine o'clock level. That leaves only the uh, 12 o'clock high uh, fighter to deal with, at least defensively. And uh, we'll just have to, <clears throat> you know, cross our fingers for the, uh, for the other fighters. So uh, we're just going to check the German uh, fighter ex uh, experience here. And <clears throat> we find that uh, this one is average and actually the second one is average as well. So nothing uh, interesting in that sense. We roll our defensive fire and see if uh, there's a hot shot there. Nope, not at all. Total miss. So the German fighters uh, attack now. Uh, so the one at 12 o'clock high uh, gives us a, a roll and misses completely. Must be the bad weather. Totally happy about that. And uh, my tail gunner will, uh, as I said, uh, Mr. Kipling is going to take a, a shot uh, as that fighter goes past. And then the other, the one in vertical dive, unfortunately lands a hit. That is not good. So um, we're going to uh, see what happens here. We get a, a six, which is uh, a single hit. Um, and uh, so we're going to see what happens here with this roll. And we roll a six, which is the port wing. And uh, hopefully it's not too much damage. I <laughs> can't, can't hurt the landing gear any at this point. Um, but it's a wing root, which we can uh, we can take that uh, that damage. That's okay, um, and we'll see if we get a, a hit on the way by. And Mr. Kipling really needs to do some more training. Um, his uh, shooting is pretty horrible. Um, so we're going to go back to the fighter cover uh, defense here, and uh, remove the German fighters that do not apply. And so we're going to remove that uh, hot shot guy and and that one because he missed is also removed. And so now we are over the target and uh, we'll see what sort of flak we have to put up with. We put up with medium flak. So this is going to be three die rolls at medium flak. Seven is a hit. Great. Uh, next roll is a seven by another name. Another hit. And then finally, we get a bit of relief with an eight <laughs> and a miss. So we're going to see what, how many flak uh, hits we have to deal with. So we've got three from that uh, first hit. 
and uh, three again from the second hit. So, geez, what a nightmare. Uh, first uh, hit here is a is a uh, uh, hit in the nose. Then we've got the starboard wing, and uh, then we have the uh, the radio room again. So, geez, it's just endless uh, endless things here. Now we're gonna just keep rolling through. And we got a hit on the waist. I'm marking these down. Uh, maybe you are too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's lots of hits here. So we have to go through. We got a hit in the tail. And then finally, the last uh, the last one will be uh, the nine, which is the waist again. So we're going to roll for the, the nose hit first. See what happens there. It's a 10. It's the equipment. And... Uh, Luckily, it's the navigator's equipment, not the bomb bombardier's equipment, especially since we're over the target. <laughs> um, the wings end up being uh, nothing much. The uh, radio operator actually gets hit. Poor Alf, Alf uh, Sharp, who's freezing in the, the radio compartment, actually, unfortunately, uh, gets killed and uh, killed by flak. It was going to be tough. He was probably going to have to suffer some frostbite, potentially, and everything. Um, so... Uh, but we're sad about that. Um, we take some superficial damage. Uh, the rudder takes a hit, um, which isn't uh, uh, game ending or anything yet. Uh, superficial damage on the last one. So finally, we're through the flak and we roll and we're completely off target. <laughs> so we're hoping for something good here and we just barely miss. We don't get any bombs near the target and we are... Uh, now trying to get out of here, minus our radio operator. Um, and we're going to see if we can turn around, get out of the storm, and get back ho home safely here, hopefully over the the, uh, the English Channel. Um, and uh, the rudder hit, I believe, actually hurt our capacity for landing as well. So we're going to have a bit of a rough landing here, even if we do make it through all the waves of fighters. So we do take a... There is a fighter wave coming, um, unfortunately. And that is going to be a 45, which is two 109s um, and a 110. So uh, there you are. So you can see they're all coming from uh, from the front. They were waiting for us to turn around. And uh, the fighter cover defense would be really great to roll a five or six here. And we do. So that helps take care of the, the fighter wave. Take care of everyone, which is excellent. And we remove those fighters and we then head up uh, back up the chart to see what uh, role the second wave uh, brings us. And we end up with a 36, which is no attackers. So very lucky there. And uh, we are now um, able to move our bomber out of the target zone and all the carnage that comes with that and move out over the English Channel. And hopefully we won't have to deal with uh, much in the way of fighters here. Now, I rolled for the fighters uh, here, and I forgot to apply the negative two modifier, um, so it should have been none. Um, as it turns out, though, it uh, it didn't matter because uh, when I rolled for the waves, I thought I was going to face one wave, but I rolled a 56, which is no attackers. And so that means um, essentially that it evened out. <laughs> I didn't, uh, um, even though I made that mistake, it ended up uh, not uh, having any consequences. And so we move our bomber over zone one in London and then to the eight Air Force Base. Now, here's the tricky part. We have to land this bird and uh, we have a negative four modifier to this roll because of the rudder and landing gear. And we roll this uh, first for the weather and that's going to be good weather. So that's a, a good thing. And here it comes. We need a good roll here. We get a seven minus four is a three. We land safely and... Uh, with the exception of our radio operator, everyone is uh, is safe. Um, we uh, will add another mission uh, marker to our, our cap here. Um, but unfortunately, we will miss Alf Sharp. He was a great radio operator, as good as they come. And uh, so we uh, we feel sad about, uh, about that. Um, and uh, we have our new radio operator installed, uh, ready to go for the next mission. Um, and uh, we are hopefully going to uh, have a little bit more uh, success with a little bit less damage uh, next time. So anyway, we hope you enjoyed this uh, playthrough. Um, I think it's, uh, it's sometimes B-17 comes across as very procedural, but I think it's actually the story that it tells is pretty compelling and I hope you're enjoying it. Anyway, uh, again, thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you here next time on Legendary Tactics.